So welcome back to this another lesson on start and stop of Oracle HTTP Server 12C. But before that, uh, I think one question might come is how do I install and configure Oracle HTTP Server in standalone mode? So let me cover that and then we'll come on to start and stop of Oracle HTTP Server. So let me go back. And this is, I told you, high level step of installation in 12C. So let's suppose you've decided that you're going to go on a standalone domain mode. So what you can do, skip this first part, which is install Fusion Middleware, skip that part. Similarly, skip the installation of database part. Then skip the schema RCU part. All you need to do is just first go and install Oracle HTTP server. I'm going to tell you one more time quickly, what is that? And then you configure Oracle HTTP server. And I'm also going to tell you that earlier in the previous lesson, we looked at how to configure Oracle HTTP server in full, full domain. I'm going to tell you what screens you're going to see and which screens you won't see when you configure. Best thing for you would be try to configure in standalone mode as well uh, in setup. So clean everything and start install one standalone mode as well. So let's go back. You've skipped uh, all the previous parts. All you go is install Oracle HTTP server. So you skip this part. Skip. So first part, we skip that. We skip the second part as well, installing the database. We skip the third part, creating the RCU as well. And we come straight to fourth point, which is install Oracle HTTP server. This is what you need to do in standalone mode. So it's going to prompt you for Oracle Home. You install the Oracle Home. And here you won't get an option of co-located. All you're going to do is standalone mode. So you won't see this option. You will only see option called standalone. Click next and you will install the software. So you will get an Oracle HTTP server installed. Then you go back. This is the file system going to look like. You will see things like OHS and WebGate. You may not see other things um, uh, yet on. You will see Oracle Common as well. You will see Oracle Common. You will see OHS and WebGate. You will not see, you may not see a lot of other things like WebLogic or, um, so there'll be some limited files here in, 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 when you do standalone board. So you again, go back to the same structure. You configure Oracle HTTP server by running config.sh. You say create a new domain. However, you will not get all of these options. You will only get co-located, sorry, standalone mode. So you'll get a standalone mode and then you will not get a lot of these screens. You will come straight to the system component. You'll not get any of these screens like database configuration scape and none of these. And all you will be getting is a system component directly here on something like you will skip all these points. It will not be there. You'll come straight to the system component and then you will get the listen addresses and you say configuration summary and finish all straight away to this. And then you come on the same way you start and stop commands. I'm going to tell you both methods on start stop. So what you do, let me give you first about how do you start and stop full in a co-located mode. So what are you going to do? You're going to set an environment variable called OHS.env. In OHS.env, we'll set Oracle home and um, and the directory location which is pointing to domain home bin you can skip without setting environment variable i try to play or set up ohs.env and the content for ohs.env should be in the activity guide so what you do you go to domain home which is nothing but we created user underscore projects projects earlier you go to bin and say start weblogic.sh so first you're creating is or starting is administration server as i said to you earlier you don't know right now what is an admin server or a managed server. We'll cover that when we look at the WebLogic domain concept or WebLogic server concept. So for now, you just go and start the WebLogic server. It's going to prompt you for an administration username and password. And this administrative username and password is the same which we used during uh, uh, during configuration of domain, which is WebLogic.sh. WebLogic Once an uh, admin server is up, you need to start the node manager. And how you start node manager is, again, if you notice 12C, there is a script in, in under domain home. Now, if during configuration, you have changed the location of a node manager, node manager might be at a different location as well. By default, it will be under domain home, start stop script. So you'll go to domain home, bin and say start node manager.sh. Once your node manager is up, once your admin server is up, you go and start the Oracle HTTP server. How you start Oracle HTTP server, you go and say domain home bin and start component.sh. And then you need to know the component name. If you forgot the component name, you, the configuration of entire domain will be going to whether it's a standalone domain or a co-located domain, it will be under domain home config folder. 
config.xml those who are who have gone through the 11g training or have gone through the weblogic module you know that configuration file is under domain home config config.xml so open the config.xml it will have the component name if you forgot there you type the component name usually we configured earlier if i show you we configured ohs underscore one so this is where we configure the system component this is the name on the screen that you see ohs underscore one so you provide which is ohs underscore one and it will start the http server and after that you can you can access oracle http server if you are going on a standalone mode there will be no start admin server so there's no need or you won't be able to start the weblogic admin server all you're going to do is start node manager and start the OHS component. Script is going to be same, but without WebLogic server, admin server. If you want to stop it, the it's other way. You first stop the component, which is stop component dot sh, and the component which is OHS underscore two. Then you stop the administration server. This is stop WebLogic dot sh, and then you provide. Uh, then you stop the node manager. Stop node manager dot sh. So just to do a quick recap again on our start stop, you set your environment variable totally optional. You don't have to set it. The environment, the scripts will have automatically call the environment scripts. I'm setting environment uh, variable so that I can reach out to this domain home easily. I don't have to go and remember this domain home. Uh, that's the only reason why. Otherwise, each start and stop script will automatically call or invoke an environment variable. So we do start weblogic.sh to start admin server. We start the node manager and then we start the component. If there is no, if it's a standalone mode, no need to start or you won't be able to start the admin server. You start the node manager and you start the OHS component. Stop is other way. You stop the component, you stop the node manager if it's a standalone mode or you stop the admin server and then stop the node manager. You can work a node manager and admin server can be managed independently. However, for Oracle HTTP server to start, the node manager must be up and running. After that node manager can be shut down, HTTP server will still continue to work. It's used only at the time of startup and shutdown. So that's all about Oracle HTTP server. Now, how do you go once you've started the services? Go to whatever is the, your machine name and the listen address, whatever address you have used here. If it doesn't work, it could be that your firewall might be blocked. We already looked it into the file system on how does Oracle HTTP Server 12C file system look like. So this is all about start and stop of 12C. Now head on to the next lesson where we look at uh, the other topics related to Oracle HTTP Server. I'll see you in next lesson.